Number one. Number one. Hey. Brother Kevin, thank you. It's perfect. Thank you, brother. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, Kevin, the church starts at 6.30. Come on, let's go. But if you shake it, it settles. 
right? You press it down, guess what? You can add more cornstarch. That's how God wants to bless you with abundance of His presence. Amen? Amen. Do you want God's abundance in your life? Amen? Amen. 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 Let's just get rid of the past. Amen. Amen. Let's get rid of the past. Whatever you experience right now, God is asking, will you just wipe it clean tonight? Amen. Amen. And I choose, say with me, I choose. I choose. To start new. To start new. Every day. Every day. Amen. Amen. And so God says, we'll be poured into your lap. This is what's so beautiful, Brother William. Church starts at 6.30. This is what's so beautiful. <laughs> I love you, beloved. This is what's so beautiful when God preaches this way through the written word. How can God pour out his blessings onto your lap? Can God pour out a blessing on my lap if I'm doing this? No, no. But I got this. I got these bills. Oh, man, this person ain't acting right. Oh, this person is talking to me over here. This person is, oh my goodness, they want me to preach over here. I've got this ministry to do. Can God pour the blessing? God is expecting for us to sit. Sit in His presence. Amen? When you sit in God's presence, it could be in your prayer room. It could be on the farm when you're walking with them. You know, at the crack of dawn. It could be with your job. It could be, you know, when you're doing crafts. Right? God just showed that to me. Rocky God. It could be wherever you're at. But when you sit in His presence, listen, I'm talking spiritually now. When you sit in His presence, God pours His anointing, His abundance over you. And He overwhelms you with a fresh power from heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to get a fresh power from heaven. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Simply say, God says that if you hold unforgiveness, you won't be forgiven. Because that's the measure you use. You see, the measure you use in this day of life, being a Christian, if you walk around that you're better than everybody, that same measure, you will answer to God with. But if you walk your walk, being thankful to the Holy and Righteous One, the only one worthy is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you love everybody. You don't even see color. Can I get an amen? amen. There, is, there ain't no racism in Christianity. Can I get an amen? There is no racism in Christianity. Amen. If you're a racist and you claim you're a Christian, you're double-minded and God said, you have nothing. Amen? amen. You love like you never love. Amen. And when you walk this walk, God promise you, I will give you the same measure back. I want, the, I want the full measure of Christ my Lord. Amen. Which means that every day I have to crucify, Brother Brandon, my flesh. I have to crucify it. I have to ask God for forgiveness. I know that I'm forgiven. Family, you're forgiven. For eternity, you're forgiven. But beloved daughter, it's a choice of yours to say, Oh, I just had that thought, and Father, that's not you. And Father God, I'm not hiding this thought. You know I'm having this thought. And right now I rebuke it. And I thank you, Father, that I am your beloved child. And this thing that used to take me down the road, right now in Jesus' name, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to cut the head off right now. Amen? Cut the head off. I'll tell you something that will stick for all of eternity. Not like everything is. Amen? But I'll tell you something right now. Satan does not want to give... Jesus Christ prays. So beloved Amanda, can you imagine when Satan puts that thought of what if? In the past, it used to bring torment. Right? But when you capture that thing by the blood of Lord Jesus, and you strangle that thing, and you look at it right in the eye, and you say, Father, I'm thankful that you are the only one worthy. And you know that this thing was trying to say what if, but I know what if, that you are for me and go before me. And in Jesus Christ's name, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give me the resurrection power within. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. That stinking devil will stop. Hallelujah. You know what? Does God, that, I'm going to ask you something. Is God surprised of what the devil does? Now let me ask you this. Does the devil want you to keep praising God? So if I, listen, it's real simple because the devil's stupid. The devil's stupid. Sit with me. The devil's stupid. Amen. Let's just call the fruit. Amen. 
And what he's going to keep doing is these stupid distractions, hoping that you keep on being busy with yourself. But when you take that distraction and you turn around and go, Daddy, God Almighty says, angels attack. Angels defend. Hallelujah. Angels. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Angels. Hallelujah. So we went over this quickly last Sunday, 2.12. Amen. Going the extra degree. Hallelujah. 211. Nothing happens. Right? 211 degrees. Water just sits there. But 212. Oh, man. Come on. Show God your 212. Oh, it just starts boiling, don't it? It's boiling. It's dancing. Amen. Oh, it's dancing. It's just going. Right? Mama came. Right? What we uncovered and what the Holy Spirit taught us is Hosanna. Hosanna means adoration, praise, and joy. Right? Remember, we went back to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And when Zechariah, the minor prophet in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament spoke, he spoke Jesus, the Savior. He spoke of this week. And what he said is, rejoice greatly. Hallelujah. Rejoice greatly. Shout. See salvation. Amen. And then we looked as far as what the palm tree meant. The palm branch is victory, triumph, peace, and eternal life. Right? All this was uncovered this past Sunday, kicking off Easter week. And the glory of God is, yes, all this is true, and this is what happened. And Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of our Heavenly Father with all power and all authority in the name above every name. You can say the name, and you can exercise that power in Jesus' name. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. We have that power. It's the same power. It's the same power of what we call the God pain, the same power within us. And we're, we're learning through Holy Spirit His presence within in how to exercise this power, in how to have reference to God Almighty, in how to worship Lord Jesus Christ and bless His Holy Spirit within. Brother Brandon, bless His Holy Spirit within. Anybody can say that they're a Christian, but how is the fruit in your life? Does the fruit in your life show Holy Spirit? Or does the fruit in your life show the world? If it shows the world, something needs to change and we need to repent, beloved church. The question is, will we? Hallelujah. Will we? Amen. Will we? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father took it further. Further on Sunday. Heavenly Father took it further on Sunday. He said the palm tree. You see that it's victory, triumph, peace, and eternal life. And they laid it at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ. But what we learn Sunday through Holy Spirit. He's our only teacher. Is that Father God deposited that same identity in every one of us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. By the grace of God. That's why. Right? And by the grace of God. That's why took, I pray that you took a little palm. You took a little palm, palm, palm leaf, right? And it's just a nice little symbol, a nice little token of God loves me. Amen. Can we say that together? God loves me. God loves me. You see what you spoke, beloved daughter of God. Right now, all of hell, all the demons are like, I can't believe that she said that. I can't touch that. But you know that you have the Father's love. No one. Right, Brother Weir? I don't care. I don't care what education you got. I don't care what denomination you worship. I don't care what you say is true, what's not true. You cannot change that my Father God loves me. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Listen, don't get so bent up. But don't get so bent out of shape with what other people believe. Amen. Don't allow that darkness to come in. They believe the way they want to believe. You just pray for them. Rejoice greatly. Hallelujah. Rejoice greatly. They're not living right. Guess what? Rejoice greatly. Father, I thank you that they're in this season right now that they think they're having a good time. They think that they're partying. They think that it's okay. But Father, I rejoice greatly because I was once there. And everybody gave up on me. But Father, you never gave up.
And by the grace of God, because we get to cheat, because we have the written word of God, right? Elder Charlie likes to say it all the time, basic instructions before leaving earth, Bible, right? I love it. He likes to say it all the time. We have the basic instructions before leaving earth, right? We get to cheat, because we get it, we got it, right? I mean, let's be honest, right? We get to cheat, right? I mean, we got it, front to back. Hallelujah. No, no books missing, praise God. That's open our to church. We believe the Holy Bible from front to back. Amen? We don't leave nothing out. Hallelujah. We don't leave nothing out. And by the grace of God, we get to see in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, how God would speak to anointed men and women that want Him. And at that very moment, you get to see the power, the miraculous, through faith in those beloved children of God. Amen? And so we, 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 we speak this because... Everyone wants to know what God has looked like, and that's why God led us to this John 3.16. Now, it's been over a year, and we had one Sunday, I believe, where every scripture was 3.16. And so I had, to, I, I had to repent, because in the middle of putting this together, Father God says, repent. And I said, I'm sorry, Father. And he says, don't be familiar with me, just because this was something over a year ago that I preached through you. Because I'm doing something new. And immediately, immediately I said, I'm so sorry, Father. I, I never, God knows. I'm not going to deny it. I'm so sorry, Father. I never want to treat you familiar. And in every message, in every word, it's always me. Forgive me. This day I declare that now. Forgive me, Father. That, that I even have that heart to hurt you. And I pray that over you. That when you see John 3, 16, you're not automatically like, well, I know that scripture. Guess what? That's what you're going to get. Right? But if you choose to say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, teach me. You're the only teacher. And I ask you, Father God, right now, to just reveal to me. Show me. And as your light shines through me, that you expose everything that does not belong in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So listen to this. For God so loved the world. Now we got to understand this real quickly. For God so loved the world, the world was very cold. Can I get an amen? amen. That's why Lord Jesus Christ came. Yeah. The world was very cold. Honestly, the world wanted nothing to do with God. That's why there's all these pagan religions, especially thriving now in this day. But back then, even his own people, his own people were so disobedient. You know why? Because it was just a matter of focus on sin, on law. Right? There was no way, put it this way, if I had a list of 613 things, and I said, you have to follow all 613 things in order to come to this church. <laughs> I, would not, I wouldn't be here. Right? None of us would be here, right, Pastor? <laughs> now imagine, imagine this time frame, I'm asking, imagine this time frame, living back in that day, Right? Being a Jew, being, being the chosen only people. We're chosen only people now because Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. 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 Our Savior died for us and rose again, so He made us one. Amen? Amen? But imagine this before Lord Jesus Christ, that they had all these laws, and year after year, all you would do is just bring a sacrifice. This was the relationship with God back then. Here. A year later. What am I doing? I'm handing it to the priest. My, my question to you is, what kind of relationship do I have with God? Right? It got to the point where the focus was how horrible I am. How I'm never worthy, never good enough. And guess what? The priest, because it's man-made, they put it so far up there to have a relationship where they were so snooty that they wanted nothing to do with the people. Does it remind you of something? Does it remind you of religion right now? And so the question that I have for you is that, are we going to treat God that same way where we come to church? Believe it or not, there's a lot of children of God that do this. They come on a Wednesday, they come on a Sunday, they sit there, and they think that they get a check mark for attendance. There's no such thing. Being the child of God and receiving Christ as Lord and Savior, you are obligated, mandatory. It is the way of life in this new covenant 
then you have to come and worship the highest of high priests. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Could you imagine? Oh, I love it when Holy Spirit preaches this way. Could you imagine, back in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, if I said, Brother David, here's my goal. Go tell the priest, I'm just too tired. I had a hard day. I had a hard week. I've been working too much. Go take my sacrifice over there. Would they allow that? So what makes us think that it's okay now? Say it with me together, family. It's one body, Lord Jesus Christ. Wake up! Wake up! Hallelujah! It's time to wake up, beloved church family. Amen? That we don't come to church just to do walk something. We come to church as we worthy. Amen? Amen? So, God rebuked all that. And here, it says it all in John 3, 16. Amen? It says it all here. The world was so cold, wanted nothing to do with God. We just uncovered what the relationship with God's children was like. He gave his only son. Say this with me, measure. Measure. Now it just got real. Lord Jesus Christ comes on the scene, and now there's a new measurement. When I speak of this measurement, let me make a funny. Holy Spirit said I can make a funny. I'm going to tell you this real quick. I, I'm not boasting on myself. It's all Holy Spirit. I'm one of the most social people that you know. I mean, I'll talk to a shopping cart. I'm being serious. Pastor, you know this about me. I'll talk to anybody. I will. I'll talk to anybody. I love everybody. I, 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 I'm not boasting on myself. It's all Holy Spirit. Because uh, I'm just so happy. I'm so happy that God saved me. He loved me. He washed me clean. That He lives in me. Amen? I'm so happy. I mean, I mean, you guys may think I'm crazy, but I was just telling pastor and the elders in there, I, I watch animals. Watch the bird earlier today taking a bath in a puddle. Just thank, thanking God for it. Oh my goodness, look at this little creature. You know, just blessing me. Amen? That's my choice. If you're judging me because I'm watching a bird, watch your own bird. Okay? Don't get crunchy about it. I'm just saying I'm so thankful. I hit puberty right now. I'm so thankful. I choose to be that way, Sister Rosie. You know why? Because I know when I'm thankful to God in everything, Holy Spirit in me is so powerful that it's beyond what I can comprehend or understand. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's beyond. So the measurement, God said, finish what I'm going to say. Sorry, Lord. So I'm as, social, as, I'm as sociable as can possibly be. But when the measurement came, I don't know how long ago, Facebook showed up on the scene. Are y'all hearing me now? And now, Sister Charlotte, because I don't have Facebook, I'm considered not sociable. I'm considered a hermit. I'm considered that you don't like to socialize with people because you don't have Facebook. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, I'm nothing against Facebook. Praise God, you're on Facebook. Use it for God's glory, amen? amen. Get the word out, hallelujah, bless people. I'm nothing against it. I know for me, God said no. I have to be obedient. And that not, that's just not, not just for Facebook, for everything. God said no. Why did God tell me that he's protecting me from something? Amen. Can you hear an amen? Amen. So you notice, you notice that when this measurement tool came about, now there's a measurement of how many friends you have. Huh? Remember back, back then, Pastor, when a sermon used to just be a sermon? Now a sermon is how many likes do you get? How many views you get? Right, Brother Brandon? And it's the truth that I'm speaking because now there's a measurement. Right? You see, that's what Lord Jesus Christ is when he came. He's the measurement. You say you worship God? Well, I know God because I'm from you. Hey. And he's going in. Can you get amen? You say you're holy? You say you're the high priest. You say that you're... But you don't know my father. Right? 
And as we continue on, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Say with me, that's me. Amen. Let's just give God praise. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's go through our praise. We got a lot to go through. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, as you can see, you may see it, may not. I don't know if Facebook can see it, praise God. But what you see here in John 3, 16, it shows God Almighty sending Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, it was a cold, say with me, it was a cold world. Oh. Now here in a minute, we're going to get into Luke 3, 16. And as you can see here in this middle section, it says warm. Why the world does it say warm? Remember, the measurement came. Right. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. The measurement came. The only holy one that can judge. Amen? Amen. Right? The only one that can judge. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. The measure. A good measure. Oh, hallelujah. Agape! Agape! Amen! Who's agape? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's get to the 3.16. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and, say it me, say it like Kentucky says it, for, whoa, hallelujah! Do you have more? Do you have Holy Spirit power in your life? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, beloved son of God. We're boiling now. We're boiling now. That's steam. Amen. Oh, that's steam. Oh. So here in Luke 3, 16, amen, John the Baptist says, now you got to remember, here is a man of God. Now you remember when he was in the womb, Holy Spirit come on him as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The Word of God says it. So let's not discount the anointing. Yeah. Hallelujah. John the Baptist anointed. I'll tell you right now, that's an anointed name right there, John. John. Yeah. Amen. Pastor, we're one, and I'm just so thankful your name is John. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why you good and good in Jesus' name. Amen. Right? Oh, hallelujah. And now you got to think that he has a strong following. And people are looking at John because John baptizes with water, right? To cleanse them. To cleanse them. But notice what John says, the one more powerful, the most powerful one comes. I can't even undo his shoelaces. I'm not worthy to. He will baptize you. And check this out. It's not only going to wash your sins, but it's going to sanctify you through the Holy Spirit. Hey. Yeah. It's going to sanctify you. Hallelujah. It's going to sanctify you. And in that sanctification, because you're a hundred percent, all of, all in, amen, that now his fire will consume you. Oh, hallelujah. Say it with me, there's a fire. Praise God. I believe and declare in Jesus' name that wherever you go, that your steps are divinely orchestrated by God Almighty, and that wherever you go, fire is just taking place. In Jesus' name. How do you receive that? In Jesus' name. God's hand. And now you can see as far as because of that cross. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, you can see God's fingerprint right there. Amen. Say with me, God's fingerprint. There's no question whose God's hand is when the measurement came. When the judge came. The judge showed up. And now there's no question as far as how much God loves me. Say with me. Amen. 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 So I'm showing you this because earlier we said, are you a thermostat or are you the thermometer? You got the cold, you got the hot, right? Are you cold or hot for agape? That's just a question Holy Spirit wanted to put up there. Are you cold or hot for agape or are you warm? This is where it's going to get deep and Holy Spirit show me this moment. Please pray for me as you're praying. In our walk with God and having a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, the enemy wants to deceive us to stay in that warm area. And as Holy Spirit teaches this, I'm trying to catch up because 
Many people call on the name of Lord Jesus Christ with no judgment. I'm just speaking the truth. And many souls say that they know Jesus, but they stay in that warm area, not being baptized with Holy Spirit and fire. You see, you need the fire to be hot with God. Can I hear an amen? amen. That's, why, that's why John the Baptist said that. He baptizes with Holy Spirit and fire. But see, there's a lot of us that want to stay in this warm area with God. That I know Jesus, I've been a Christian for so long. Can you believe there are children of God that have the nerve to say to me, well, I know that there is a Holy Spirit, but that was back then. Immediately, I don't care if I lose a relationship, I tell them, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Be careful what you say. Because Lord Jesus says, you speak against me, I'll forgive you. But if you blaspheme against Holy Spirit, you will never be forgiven. And I know that some of these souls say things like this because they were raised up in religion. They allowed a man like myself to teach them when we have no right to be the teacher, only Holy Spirit is. Amen. 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 If I need a gas, and I go to the gas station, but yet I sit in the car, does that do anything? <laughs> Some of you are like already shaking your Some of you are laughing, right? It's like a, it's like a no dust statement, right? I need gas. I'm, run, I, I'm, I'm running on fumes. I'm at the gas station. Why isn't it working? <laughs> I love it when children... When young ones laugh, praise God, amen. I believe that blesses God more than anything, hallelujah. Right? I'm running on fumes. I put, put it in my, in, in this, right? I'm sitting there. Why isn't this moving? Okay, Brother Joey, I got it. But did you? Because right now we have Christians coming to church. on empty. Why is that? I'm going to answer it. Choosing not to repent. Choosing not to break yourself in the presence of Holy Spirit. Choosing not. I pray tonight this Easter week, that before we leave here, that you personally choose to break yourself for God. This is the only thing that you can do, amen? See, the beauty about, <laughs> hallelujah, the beauty about agape, the beauty about pastoring an agape church, a Holy Spirit-filled church, the beauty about it is, we all know as worshipers, Father, you've done everything perfect. There's nothing lacking. So there's nothing wrong with our God. Right? How do you define insanity? Do the same thing over and over and over again, but you expect different results? Amen. That's insanity. Can I get an amen? amen? That means that if you keep doing the same thing, if you get, listen to me, listen to me, okay? Holy Spirit says, say this, and I don't know if this is for you. If it is, you get crunchy about it, take it up with God. Amen? amen. But if you get up in the morning, and let's just say you're unemployed. If you get up in the morning and all you do is have your coffee, sit there, watch TV, eat, maybe watch a little bit more TV, you wonder why your body's aching. Take a little, take some pills, eat, go to sleep, wake up, have some coffee. Watch some TV, go on the internet, Facebook, I don't know. Eat. 
I'm not looking. I'm not looking up. I'm just saying. And you're wondering why in your life you are in a position where you're just crying out to God going, why am I in all this pain? Why am I not moving forward in my life? Why, 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 why am I struggling in my finances? I'm not going to look at nobody, but you got lazy. You got idle. You become your own God in your life, and you think that it's okay, and you call yourself a Christian, and all you're doing now is you're just living out the rest of your days in your little bondage. Sometimes this message is too hard to preach. But you know what? I have to be obedient. Amen. Because when I stand eyeball to eyeball with my Lord Jesus Christ, not one of you, not one of you, you're going to say, oh, well, I made him lie. Oh, he didn't say the truth because I was crunchy that day and I was looking at him like this. I'm going to say everything that God tells me to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. I am. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Praise God. So we want change. Say it with me. I want change. So we want change in our life. Guess what? This is personal. Right? It's personal between me and God. Now, if I'm getting up, have my coffee. Do, you know, like, like the scenario that I just told you about. God said, apply that right now to my life. I get up. Instead of going for the coffee. Amen. Tried. 
But I believe with all my heart, right? Pastor, it was more than that. Come on now. How many of you show hands fast for the Lord? Look at all the hands. You cannot tell me. You, I, you cannot tell me. You fast one day and you're just like, oh my goodness, what is happening here? Right? You cannot tell me that the enemy is not going to try to distract you. And then what happens? After those 40 days, it was documented. Lord Jesus Christ laid the biggest smackdown. It was already over after that. Amen. But check this out. Lord Jesus didn't leave that place and go, listen, this is how important it is for our church to reach out to family and friends and say, come to church. Amen. Listen, I don't care if they get annoyed. Don't be ashamed of Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Don't be ashamed of Lord Jesus. Because God says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. So you need to reach out to your family and friends and say, come to church. Amen. I don't want to open our church. That guy's too loud. Go to church. Amen. Amen. Go to church. Right? Praise God. Just go to church. It doesn't have to be here. But you have to start coming to church. God is doing something amazing. Isn't it incredible that I said this on Friday? Friday evening, I am recovered. Come to church. Every day this week, God promises a breakthrough and a miracle in your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And there's many that take that serious. I'm expecting a break. Watch what God's going to do. Amen. 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 That's not going to go. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Come to church. Amen? So just to answer this quickly, praise God. I'm so excited. Is that notice that after the fast, Lord Jesus went to recruit the church. You can just see him walk in on the side of the water. You ever wonder what Lord Jesus Christ was thinking when he was walking alongside the water? I like to think that as he saw the water, that he just he just saw the throne of heaven, living waters flowing from heaven. As his feet just touched it. <laughs> I can see him looking at his reflection. And I know that he saw himself battered and crucified. And I can see him looking up and seeing fishermen out there. And being God Almighty, he could just see their hearts. He could feel, right? Just like we can do with each other. We can look through each other. Let's be honest with each other, can't you? It's all Holy Spirit. Say the name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's what makes us so special. It's Lord Jesus Christ and the promise of His Holy Spirit in all of us. And what did Lord Jesus start doing? He started getting His disciples, right? If the church and fellowship and coming together wasn't important, Lord Jesus Christ would have just went back to the temple. Do you guys recall who could enter the most holy of holy places? Only the high priest. And how many times a year? And if anybody tried to, what would happen to him? Right? Think about this. If it wasn't important for the new church of today, that you come to church, to come together, to worship God, to love on each other, to allow Holy Spirit to flow, Lord Jesus Christ, He had every right to just walk in the Holy of Holies. Walk, just move the curtain aside, walk into the Holy of Holies, and just sit there. Lord Jesus Christ could have done this to demonstrate His glory and His power. And guess what? He has every right to. Because He is the High Priest. Amen? But the glory of God is you're not going to do that. No. Father God says you're not going to do that. You're going to do what I will for your life. Yes. So that my blood covers my people with mercy Amen. and grace. Yes. And it's no longer a matter of your works. It's all about faith Amen. in the Holy One. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Revelation 3.16 leads us to all this. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out 
of my mouth. We said earlier in that pause, and I thank you for the prayers, because I'm just trying to keep up with what Holy Spirit has for us. If we say that we're a Christian and we have Christ as Lord, but the fruits of our life is just lukewarm, meaning that we're in the world and trying to be a Christian. In a, addiction, pornography, lust, grace, grace, church, ministry. God right now is saying something has to die. See, the warning comes right now in a good measure. That if you want to have this fire from God, you have to, I like to call it, shock yourself. Beloved Trisha said, wake up. You see, rather than this world doing something to you to shock you, you know those moments that take your breath away? Right? Unexpected things. Right? Unexpected things. The, 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 the devil just comes in and does something and it's like, oh my God. And it takes your breath away. You ever get going like this? You're like, some of us pass out. You got shocked. I'm not discounting. We all been shocked. Yeah. Whether it's abuse, right? Break, right? Getting beat, being treat, mistreated, you know, from an ex-spouse or, you know what I'm saying? Or going through struggles right now, whatever it is. We're, we've all been shocked. There's, there, there's, no, there's no avoiding that, Right? Especially as parents, this wasn't the plan for your life. What's happening? It's a shock, right? But what God is asking us now, tonight, is will we shock, choose to shock ourselves? How is that possible, Brother Joy? How do I shock myself to wake up? We have to come to the point in our, in our worship, in our, in our crying out to God, that we have to just bear it all. Bear it all. Is there something happening in your life right now that you know is not of God? God is saying, bring it. And don't just bring it and say, well, this is it. Shock yourself about it. If you have to have an argument with God, if you have to say, God, I blame you because this was happening, but now I know it wasn't you. It was the devil who did it. But Father, I'm not telling you this. I'm mad because I know you're God and you should have stepped in and did something. And now I know that Jesus is my Lord and he saved me and he did do something already, but it still hurts. But see, God needs you to just be transparent because anybody can be religious. Anybody can act the part of a Christian. But the sad part is, you're going to leave empty. God is saying, will you allow me to fill you, beloved child? Listen, our God is a big God. He's the only God. And guess what? Even if you tell him, God, I was mad at you because you did this. And I know now you didn't do it. The devil did it. But I blame you for all these years. And now I'm at your altar saying, forgive me. Help me, Lord. I promise you in Jesus' name that God will help you. Amen? Amen. You see, there's two kinds of fires. Or. There's two kinds of fires, Mr. Charlotte. There's a destroying fire that you can see on the half of the screen. That's what the devil tried to do to Lord Jesus. Tempt. 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 All oh, lust. The world, lust, emotions, emotions, oh, torment, torment, stress, pride, all about me, oh, no, it's all about me, ah. destroying fire, or, say it with me, or, or, there's a consuming fire. I pray tonight that you choose consuming fire, that you would allow the Holy Spirit right now. To just change your life, change your heart. Will you do that? Amen. Will you do that tonight? Will you allow him to? Amen. Get up on your feet with me, please. Praise God, we're about to close. Therefore, Therefore now notice the letters up here, so this gets gooder and gooder, amen? amen. Oh, 
it's been a minute since we talked about lettuce. Praise God. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us, say with me, let us. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. May I ask you, are you in awe of God? Amen. 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 All right, that's a good answer. Amen. Everybody, every voice said amen. Now let me ask you this. Do you revere Him? God is good? Oh, God. And this is where we pause because Holy Spirit said pause. We always say God is good all the time, right? Now here's a question. Are you good to God? I love it. Our elders said all the time. And I pray that, right? Our elders try. We all fail. Amen? But they're anointed of God. They're anointed of God. They're elders. Listen, you hear me saying God, God spanked me, Pastor. God spanked me. You hear me saying God told me, I want you to correct the way you say that. It's not just the lady. Because I put that person in that office. Amen. And you have, you have reverence and respect for that person. Amen. And I, Pastor, and I ask God for forgiveness. Because I never, don't ever discount, disrespect someone in authority. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, I'm not telling you, listen, do I try to control you? No. For those of you who've been here for years, do I try to, no. All I ask you to do is bless Holy Spirit, amen? amen? But I'm telling you this to bless you, because I want God to fill you with His power. Amen. amen. God, put, God put them in their position, amen? amen? Let us be thankful and worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is, say it with me, a consuming fire. Amen? Amen? I pray in Jesus' name that as we close tonight, remember, this is up to you. Isn't that beautiful? A good measure. See, you've received the good measure. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit now fills you with overflow. Amen? This is what God is speaking of. The running over is Holy Spirit. His sanctification, His presence. But this is what I love. When you receive Christ as Lord, it's between you and Him. Amen. Facebook is between you and God Almighty. Are you going to choose to shock yourself tonight? Are you choose to be so transparent with God in your confessions that you choose to leave out of here in the overflow and on fire for God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Come to the altar.